Speaking of the IBM computer, yes, Watson, how did that come about? From what I understand, it was an IBM initiative. They were watching me on Jeopardy. This is the story I've heard. And they thought, you know, maybe this should be our thing. You know, we beat Kasparov at chess. Why can't we beat this guy at Jeopardy? And uh, they contacted the show. And uh, over a period of years, they managed to, to, you know, starting from nothing, no computer was good at answering questions five years ago. You know, this is this something that no technology could do. So they were starting from scratch. And in a matter of years, they had, you know, you pour thousands of servers and tens of millions of development dollars at a problem, terabytes of memory from the internet, uh, you know, a, a huge text bank. And they, uh, they got very good. I got a phone call saying, would you like to come back on Jeopardy and, and play a, a computer? And I was so excited. You know, I'm a former computer programmer myself. Right. It just felt like being part of the future. You know, this is something that people are going to be remembering in, in textbooks someday. I had to do it. Well, you mentioned that you majored in computer science. How would you assess Watson, his programming, and were his thought processes logical? You know, I'm no artificial intelligence expert, but I took a few classes, and I knew that uh, there was no computer that could play Jeopardy yet. Watson was a, a huge breakthrough. Um, and the funny thing is, when you read about some of Watson's, when I read about some of Watson's strategies, what it would do when it looked at a Jeopardy clue, you know, picking out the keywords, making connections between them, finding concepts that related to all of those, um, checking the checking that that possible answer against the right time period, the right geography. You know, these, these all seemed like things that I was doing as I was reading a Jeopardy question. So it wasn't just simulating uh, Jeopardy play with some brute force technique. You know, it was actually doing the same tricks that a good human player would do. And I was I was deeply impressed by that. But ultimately, was it a fair fight? Uh, Watson had this speed edge that no human could be. You know, on the buzzer, a computer will have perfect reflexes every time. And it just turned out that no human reflexes could beat it consistently. Um, I mean, it's amazing they could answer all those questions, but both of the human players could have answered more. We just, again, weren't fast enough. Ultimately, what did you learn and conclude from competing with Watson? Uh, are we really going to get to the point where just like a lot of old movies and TV shows depicted, computers are going to take over the world, take over us. The, people kept asking me that. Is this is this like the computer in 2001? You know, is this like the computer in Terminator? You know, everyone seemed worried that as soon as it went on a game show, this thing was going to get the missile launch codes. Right. Um, <laughs> I, I, it was sort of a. I, I wasn't expecting that feeling of obsolescence. You know, as I stood there, you know, doing the one thing that I'd ever been good at, and suddenly realizing that. All it took was enough processor speed, and now I was out of a job, you know. Um, and I think that's going to be happening more and more. People with what they thought were safe information age jobs are suddenly finding that computers can now be pharmacists or paralegals or, or whatever it is. And suddenly this, a lot of this brain work is just going to be gone. And it was sort of a, it was, it was sort of a hollow feeling, you know, sort of an existential nightmare that this flat screen TV next to me is better than me at the only thing I know how to do. If you've enjoyed your journey on the TV Time Machine, please like and subscribe. We look forward to having you again on the TV Time Machine.